God, now I've killed the mic. Hold on. I think that's okay. Can you hear me? All right. So I just wanted to point out I'm wearing lipstick, uh, which I don't usually do, because I'm at that age where my lips blend into my face. <laughs> so I just wanted you to know that I do have a mouth. And then, so this, this is what I'm going to be reading from. So um, the story I'm going to be reading from is uh, called Angel in Glas- Glasgow. And um, as Phil mentioned, a lot of the stories in the book are uh, in the, they're in the voices of children or in, of young people. And the backdrops that they face are uh, politically and socially very difficult. For example, there are stories set in Afghanistan, uh, in Iran, uh, in India, uh, but also in Los Angeles and, um, you know, and, and in the Western world where we think everything is okay. Um, so, so that's basically about the collection. This particular excerpt is, um, there are four characters. One's fairly minor. It's the male, of course. He's very minor. And he's the boy who works in Tesco's. And there are three other characters, and I will tell you about them. Minou is a Sudanese refugee, so she's basically fleeing uh, violence in the Sudan, which is how she's ended up in Glasgow. Sheila, who is from Liverpool. Kenzie, who is from Glasgow. Minou, in this excerpt, has just helped Sheila and Kenzie rob a liquor store. The boy from Tesco's calls, hey, you, the black girl. Sheila and Kenzie running in their platform shoes, Manu running in her flip-flops. At the far end of the street, they dodged down the side of a building. Bank of Scotland, faded black letters, half scraped off the old brick. Sheila, who's he calling black? Fucking racist. Kenzie, well, she is black then. She's not black. She's come under the light, would you? Manu stands under an orange street light hanging over the rubbish tip. Kenzie, she looks fucking orange to me. Well, she's not black, black, more like me auntie's new car, lovely deep brown. Sheila stares. Are them flip-flops? Kenzie, she's wearing flip-flops. Kenzie, your feet must be freezing. You can no run in flip-flops. Minu, but you are running in these platform shoes. Sheila, she's got a point there, Kenz. Me feet are on fire. Come on, let's go round the back of yours. Kenzie's block of flats is a dark, fetid building with urine-washed stairs. Outside, someone is dragging an enormous bag of rubbish. It scrapes across the ground. Minu, it is only rubbish. Kenzie turns around. Half wit, what do you think it was? Dead body? You learn the best way to drag a body is by the heels. You don't look back. You just pull until you reach the dropping place. Then you step aside and they kick the body in. And then you go back for the next one. You don't look at anything past the ankles. You don't want to recognize the scars on the shins, the shape of the knees. You do this in the morning when the bodies are still covered in dark, when it's cold, so you don't smell them, especially when they might be someone you know. The grass at the back of Kenzie's is a dry, balding patch, but it's clear enough to sit on. A couple of burnt black bushes provide a little shelter. From inside her shirt, Sheila pulls out the stolen brandy. This will warm us up. They pass the bottle and toast each other. Winners, winners, winners. Shouldn't they get inside somewhere? Are the police coming? They don't have guns here in Glasgow, but they have sticks. It doesn't take much to break bones. It was a boy, a bored boy. And she made the mistake of smiling because he looked foolish with the gun that was too big for him. He looked like the boys at school in the class below hers, but a boy with a gun is different from a boy with a book. Enraged, he used the butt. She lifted her arm in time to protect her head. That was when she knew they were going to kill her, like they'd killed the other girls when they'd used them up. It had been hard to run with a broken arm. When she reached the Scottish mission, she found she was one of hundreds camped around the small whitewashed building. But they set her arm and gave her the job of teaching songs to the kids for Sunday school. The pure pleasure, their out-of-tune voices, their habit of examining the ceiling while they were singing, how they tugged at their shorts or forgot the words, how they looked up at her, and how she forgot what had been done to her. Until a man, some helper or teacher, came into the room and the kids went silent. More than brandy, Minou wants the chips. Will she get her change back from the three pounds she gave her? Minou takes a mouthful. The liquid is harsh, but not as harsh as the beer that the soldiers forced them to take in the evenings before they spread out the women. Sheila and Kenzie drink quickly and pass her the bottle, but Minou hands it back. It is necessary to reduce the heartbeat. 
it is necessary to breathe the heart back to normal. Kenzie nods, swallows. Your first time, Robin. I was scared my first time. Then Brace nab wasn't it? No one fucks with me. Shut up, Kenzie. She's not used to it. Kenzie hangs over Manu. Manu counts. One one hundred. Two one hundred. Three one hundred. You should do something about yourself. Hey, Kenzie turns to Sheila. Let's cut her hair. Sheila puts an arm out. You bevied. I'm no. Kenzie roots in her bag and pulls out a small pair of scissors. Come on, Sue, Dan. I'll make you look gorgeous. She snaps the scissors in the air. Manu breathes. 15100. 16100. It's never an attack until... Sheila tries to wrench the scissors away, but Kenzie shoves and Sheila falls backwards. Kenzie with the sisters jawing... Scissors, I'm sorry, jawing open and shut, laughing. Manu counts. 22100. 23100. Sheila tries to grab at Kenzie's legs, but Kenzie swoops forward, the scissors rasping, kneels in front of Manu, snips a chunk of hair, stares, laughs, looks over her shoulder. She'll let me do it. Would you believe it? There's no time to decide whether to move or not to move. Manu stabs rigid fingers into the solar plexus. Kenzie buckles, gurgling, heaving on the bald earth. Manu snatches the scissors, closes the blades, and aims straight for the neck. Sheila's platform shoe connects with Manu's hand and the scissors drop, hitting Kenzie on the temple. Kenzie, gasping, Bitch, I'll fucking kill you! Sheila looks at Manu, Go! Manu, on her feet, backs away, wants to run, but can't. Kenzie staggers upright, aims a punch at Sheila, misses. Kenzie! A new voice, male. The black hooded outline approaches, hands stuffed in his hoodie. There's no decision to move. Instantly, the scissors are in Manu's hands, blades forward. He won't be able to get anywhere near. If she just runs now, if she just runs, the feet don't move. Scissors pointing out. Kenzie coughs. Fuck are you doing here? I just got off, you know. It's the boy from Tesco's. He stands there, hands fumbling in his pockets like they're trying to escape. Thought you'd come down here for a quick one, did you? Kenzie, it's not like that. The boy moves closer. Kenzie's face has changed, softer. She smiles, looks at the boy from wild scourings of eyeliner. Oh, come on then. He helps Kenzie to her feet, picks up her bag. They walk off together. She doesn't look around or say goodbye. Sheila sighs, picks up the half bottle of brandy. Minou, this is her boyfriend. She goes with him sometimes. I want my change. What? My change, you took my three pounds. Sheila rummages in her pocket and hands over the coins. Come on, let's go to the pub. The alcohol is thrumming in her chest, her stomach, heart banging from the attack that wasn't an attack. The rules are different here. Sheila. Look at the state of them feet. Manu looks down at the pale green flip-flops against the dark skin, black toenails. They are very dirty. You gotta get some shoes. They head back along Govan Road and push into the Brecon Bar. Old men sitting there, pool tables busy, young guys standing in shouldered off groups, girls sitting around small tables, bartender swinging glasses down from the rack above, calling orders over his shoulders. Sheila digs in her pocket and pulls out coins. Gives the money back. Come on, it's for the drinks. Manu hands back her change. We got enough for a couple of halves. Wait here. Manu stands near the door, back against the wall. The police won't come now. But even so, her heart is juddering, beating its own time in a way she remembers. Out, get out, out, get out. Sheila comes back with half pints of a pale liquid, and they head to the small room at the back where the noise falls away. Back against the wall, facing the doorway, Manu holds the cold glass in cold hands, stares into the condensation, trickles clear, small, winding paths. That one is hers. The one that stops suddenly is her mother's. Her brothers, her father, the baby. Sheila swallows a mouthful. I suppose it's none of me business, but what really happens over there? How come yous all have to leave? They're all murdering yous like. Manu releases the glass. I'm from Kosti. It is a big town in North Sudan. It is below Khartoum. You know this place. I saw that Sudan on the telly. Africa, right? I love them beads you lot put in your hair. Manu was once one of those girls on the telly. She and her mother fetched firewood and balanced 15-gallon jerry cans of water on their heads. Each night her mother braided her hair before the soldiers came. 
So did them church lot come and save yous? The glass of beer, pale gold, running with tears. Those church people tell lies. They tell lies to us in our country, and they tell lies to us in this country. And then the girls are pregnant. Yeah, it's always the fucking man. Sheila tips the beer back. As she swallows, Manu sees a thin, pale line across the left side of the throat. Someone has cut you, she gestures to Sheila's throat. Yeah, me dad. Got pregnant of his best friend, didn't I? But, but his friend? Don't remember nothing. Drunk, wasn't I? Me dad went mad. Lucky me mum stopped him. Minu is silent. Everything tumbles like a bad movie. Purple-white lights in the grocery store. Scissors. Brandy. Cold blank sky. A man cutting his daughter's throat. Screech and bellow as something is murdered in the bar. Sheila's eyebrows hitch, one pierced with a silver stud. That'll be the karaoke. You ever done the karaoke? Come on, it'll be a great cultural experience. Thank you.